The first thing to do uh, when we want to test a coil is to place the coil into the test slot. And it's a standard slot that will fit any uh, KW coil or Ford coil from 13 to 27. We place the function switch into the capacitor value position. We have to hold the points open. I usually just hold them open with my finger since there's no lethal voltage here. Holding the points open will remove the short across the internal capacitor. I can then push the button and you can see the meter should come up and read inside the little green box under the scale for the capacitor value. And that tells me that the capacitor is good. It, it falls in that little green box. The second test that I want to perform, again on the capacitor, is I'm going to change the function switch to the capacitor leakage position. In this, in this case, there should be no leakage. It should be a brand new capacitor. A shorted capacitor, I can simulate that because the points are closed right now. If I push the test button, you'll see the meter reads all the way over because the capacitor is shorted, showing maximum leakage. But if I open the points, you should see the needle go all the way back. You can, it has a very narrow green range, but you can see that this capacitor internally has no leakage at all, so it's brand new capacitor, and that's an excellent test for the capacitor. In review, in this position we have the, have the ability to measure the capacitor value, in this position the capacitor leakage. If it passes both of those tests, it's a good internal capacitor. We don't have to dig the capacitor out of there. Uh, we know it's good internally. Finally, the next portion of the test is the coil operate current. In this particular position, when we flip over to the, to the uh, coil amps position, we now have three settings uh, on the uh, magneto voltage. I'm in the mid or average uh, range setting. I will put it there and when I press the button uh, you'll actually see the, the coil begin to spark and the display should show one and only one spark occurring at 120 degree intervals. And the meter should show right inside the green range down below. That shows that the coil is operating uh, at or near its average of 1.3 amps. Notice there's one and only one spark. I can change the, current, the, the uh, magneto output setting and you can see that the coil current will change. Now it's measuring just a little bit higher and I can change it to, another, to the other and now you can see it's measuring a little on the low side but again it's always producing one and only one spark. That's a good coil. The coil uh, will, will produce one and only one spark if it's working properly. We only have three sparks because we're focusing on three sparks that occur one after the other uh, rather than the entire 16 that you would normally see. If we tried to fill this whole display uh, at, at the speed that this is turning, you wouldn't be able to see them. They would all be run together. So the strobo spark actually spaces them out and we can actually look at the individual sparks. Again, this is a first spark uh, as it would normally occur uh, coming when the, when the magneto provides power to the, to the coil through the timer. Uh, the first spark is the most important. That's the spark that actually fires uh, the uh, ignition on the car. Uh, the strobo spark uh, has a timer built into it, unlike a, a hand crank coil tester, so it produces a first spark, then it, it, it does not produce a spark during the other multiple sparks that might occur, and then the next occurrence you see on the display is the next first spark. So it's what you're seeing is like three cylinders firing one after the other. You're not seeing all of the, uh, all of the other firings, and the reason for that is, is because the coil between firings in a car with the timer, the coil goes points go completely back to rest. Uh, they go completely closed, they completely relax, and it takes longer in a different current to ramp up to fire for the very first spark than it does for all the subsequent sparks. So a hand crank coil tester sets the coil for an average current of, of a bunch of sparks together, but at no time during when you're cranking a hand crank tester does the coil itself go back to the at rest position. In other words, to the position it's at like right now with no power applied to it. And that's key because the way the coil is sitting right now with no power applied to it is the way it's actually sitting just before it ramps up and fires on the very first magneto pulse. And it's that pulse that you would like to, mask, to match all your coils to. So you ideally don't care what the coil draws but at all other times. You just would like to make sure that that first pulse that it ramps up and fires at is the same for all four coils. And with a strobo spark it will do that because that's the current you're actually reading on the meter. You're reading the current of the first sparks. By contrast, I'm going to take this coil, this next one, which is a new coil. It has, I will quickly check the capacitor. I will put it on the capacitor value and I will hold the points open and you can see it also goes into the green box. I'll 
push it over to leakage and again I will open the points and you can see that it's good so it has the same value capacitors zero leakage and now I will come over to the current and press it but now you will notice that there's double sparking if you look at the display you can see an erratic pair of sparks occurring at each of the locations and this can be somewhat exacerbated if I slow it down or, or weaken the magneto or strengthen it it may change a little bit, it may not, depending on different nodes that you focus on. And of course, the current, while it might show being relatively close uh, on this reading, it's probably off because uh, we're, we're actually measuring two, uh, two split sparks there, and we're not getting an accurate reading like we would uh, if we were uh, actually measuring this uh, with a single spark occurring. So the first thing that must occur is we must get the coil to operate with one and only one spark, and then our current reading uh, is, is genuine, then we know it's valid. Uh, this is an Allen hand-cranked coil tester, uh, typical of the Model T era. This one's fully restored, uh, magnets remagnetized. Uh, this is what I've been using to set up uh, Fun Project's ignition coils, which we've been uh, using for these tests. Um, I will now uh, plug a coil in. This is the same coil I just had in the strobel spark, and hopefully it should produce 16 and only uh, uh, 16 sparks, one for each pulse of the magneto, and the operate current should come up to uh, mid-range or 1.3. We'll show that and then we'll probably turn the lights out uh, in the room so hopefully you can visualize the sparks a little easier on the video. Uh, this type of uh, tester does not use the usual drum. It has a rotatable spark gap and the sparks actually uh, stand in mid-air. So. There we go. Now if we turn the lights out, you can see the individual sparks. There should be 16 of them. One for each pulse of the magneto. This is a pretty typical hand crank coil tester, which the strobo spark uh, can emulate. So this demonstrates uh, a strobo spark tester and its uh, features. It's fairly simple. It's light, weighs uh, about five pounds. Uh, you can pretty much take it any place and uh, just plug it in.